Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make the AI detect the player's flashlight. So in this the player will be using a flashlight as you normally would. If the AI sees that light they're going to go to the light, investigate it and obviously if they then see the player they'll chase them. I won't be doing the chase part in this video but that will be the exact same as previous videos I've done. In this I'm just going to make it so the AI can detect the flashlight and then go to where it was. So if I hit play I'll show you what this is going to look like. So I get in, I'll go to first person, walk over here, you see the AI is there, I'm not going to have it moving just to make it easier. I press F to turn my flashlight on, we put it in front of the AI, the AI is going to go to where the flashlight was, I turn it off and it's stopped. Again, it's going to keep going to where the flashlight is, like so. And again, obviously you then want to have it chasing you as well, but again, that's the exact same as it is in previous tutorials. So this is very easy to implement chase, random roam, patrolling, all of that good stuff in there. You don't need to mess about with this code in today's video to do that. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me this is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you this could be third, first, or if you've named it, I'm just going to find some empty space. Then in here I'm going to go to the viewport and I'm just going to set up a very basic flashlight. So I assume you've probably already got this, if you don't then I do have a more in-depth video However, again, I'm just going to go over the very basics of it. So I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add a light, and it's going to be a spotlight, like so. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the camera, because I want it to be following the first person camera. So I'm going to do that and just move it into the position I want. And I'm going to put the intensity all the way up, just so that I can see it in the bright daylight, which I have. I'm not going to mess about with anything else on the light. However, I am also going to untick visible, so by default, the flashlight is off. Compile and save that. Then what I'm going to do is I want to add something else which the AI will use to detect the light. So what I'm going to do is deselect everything so it doesn't parent it onto anything and then add a component and I'm going to add a cone. And I can just name this one flashlight cone but it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to drag that onto the camera as well so it moves with the light. You can put it onto the flashlight as well if you'd like so it moves with that flashlight. Again just make sure it moves with it. And what we want to do is we want to just make this the same size as our flashlight, or essentially how big you want it to be for the AI to detect it. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y and then scale it up to about 6.5 or 7. There's some good values which I found earlier, and I'll move it into the position which I want it to be in, which I think around here will be good. So if you select that, you can see we've got the cone there and the light there. What I might do is just change the flashlight angle where it goes and the radius as well. So essentially wherever the flashlight goes, this cone goes as well. Now it doesn't matter too much if it's not perfect, this cone is where the AI will be able to see the flashlight. So however big you want the radius to be for the AI to see the flashlight, that's how big you'd make this cone here. So I want it to be this big. So this one's the light, this one's where the AI will detect that light. What we're going to do is obviously we don't want to actually have this in the game. So if we hit play, you'll see that we just have this in front of the player, which obviously we don't really want. So a simple way to do that is to select it again, so the flashlight cone. I'm just going to simply tick hidden in game. So that we can't see it, the AI can't see it, other players can't see it. What we also want to do is mess about with the collision, because at the moment this has collision, which will move everything out of our way. So if we walk in front of the AI, the flashlight will essentially have a force pushing away, which obviously we don't want either. But we do still want it to have some collision so the AI can detect it. So what we're going to do is find the collision here, change the collision presets to custom, have collision enabled as collision enabled query in physics, object type as well as static, and then let's tick the ignore box up here so everything is on ignore. But under trace responses, we've got visibility and camera. We want to tick block for those. As for this, we're going to be using line traces or box traces, sorry, to actually detect where this is. So the trace responses we want to leave on there. Everything else will just pass through. So this collision will only block line traces, which is perfectly what we want. So let's compile and save that. And that is the basic part done for setting up our flashlight and detecting it as well. Obviously we still need to enable it and turn it on and off, but we'll do that in a second. But this is the collision and setting that part up. So like I say, let's actually toggle it on and off. So we'll go to the event graph. In the empty space we found, I'm going to simply right click and get to the F keyboard event. Again, if you want a more in-depth video on creating a flashlight, I do have one and that also includes like batteries as well. But part of this you still will want, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. And out the pressed of this, I'm going to get a flip-flop to toggle between two values of A and B. A, we want to turn it on. B, we want to turn it off. 
So we're going to get a reference to our spotlight up here and also our flashlight cone. Out of the spotlight, we're going to set visibility. And as we want to turn it on, I'm going to tick the new visibility. The flashlight cone, I'm going to set collision enabled, like so. And I'm going to set the collision to be collision enabled query in physics. So again, that means the AI can now detect this flashlight. I'm going to connect that into A, select the set visibility and set collision enabled, copy and paste it with control C, control V underneath here, connect the targets like this, and we're just going to do the opposite. So off of B, we want to turn it off. So what we can do is just untick new visibility and set the collision type to be no collision. And again, this means that when it's on, the player can see it on and the AI can detect it. When it's off, the player can't see it and the AI can't detect it. So this part here with the collision enabled is the extra part you want to add on if you've done my previous flashlight tutorial. So again, this will now allow us to turn on and off the flashlight with the AI being able to detect it or not detect it depending on whether it is on or off. So let's compile and save and that part should work perfectly for us and we can close the character blueprint as that is all we need to do in there. So now we want to open up our AI blueprint. Now if you don't have one, what you can do is you can select the character blueprint, hit control C, go to where you want it, which for me is in light detection and hit control V, you now have an AI. Rename it, open it up, do the code in there. I already have one, which I've named AI light detection. So once you've got your AI, we can just open it up straight away, like so. In here, I already have it as I've got the random roam code. I'm not using it in today's video. However, it's there just in case I want to show you it later on. But now we're in our AI. And so what we're going to do is simply right click in some empty space and add a custom event. And I'm going to name this one, look for light or search for light or detect light, anything along those lines. Out of this, I'm going to hold down D and left click to get a delay with the duration as 0.5. As by default, the pawn sensing itself checks it every 0.5 seconds. So I think that'll be good for checking the light as well, as we're essentially creating our own fake pawn sensing here. I did try many different methods earlier with pawn sensing, with AI perception, with both sight and hearing. However, the sight didn't work too well. Hearing as well also wasn't great because the AI didn't even have to be looking at the light to detect it. So I found this was the best way. Again, duration of 0.5. Out of the completed of that, we're going to get a box trace by channel. We want a box trace, not a line trace, just so it covers a wider area. And the start, we want it to come out of the AI's head. So it's like they're looking through their eyes. So we're gonna get a reference to the mesh up here. So just drag and drop it in and get socket location. The in socket name, I'm gonna put head, which is all lowercase, as that is where the AI's eyes are. Now for you, it might be named something different. So to find out, you can just go to the AI character skeleton. So for me, that's gonna be content, mannequin, character, mesh, UE4 mannequin skeleton, Again, use the skeleton which you have for your AI. And if I go to the skeleton tree, and we just select the head there, you see it's named head or lowercase, and that's where the eyes are. You might have it differently. You might have uppercase, lowercase, you might have its face, you might have individual eyes. Choose whichever one you want, but make sure it's spelt perfectly correctly. I'm gonna close that. At the return value of this, that's gonna go straight into the start of the box trace. As again, we want to start it where the AI's eyes are. Out of the return value, we're also going to get a vector plus a vector, connecting that into the end there. And we'll finish that up now. But the reason we're getting a vector plus a vector going to the end is to keep this box going in a straight line. So what we need to add to this is just the forward facing direction for our AI. So what we can do is just come out of the mesh here. And I'm going to get the right vector, connecting that into there. Now I didn't get the forward vector because the forward vector is actually to the left, so this way. Because you see the forward facing vector is to the left. So if we get the right vector instead, it's straightforward. Now for you and your custom character, it might be the forward vector. Customize it to get it how you want. And you can also obviously just get the actor rotation and get the forward vector of that into there if that makes more sense for you. So a simple way to do that is like I say, get actor rotation and then get forward vector, connecting that in there. But I'm gonna keep it as I have it now. Then after this, we wanna change the half size. I'm going to have a 70 on the X, 70 on the Y, and 50 on the Z. You can customize this box to be as big as you want. This is just essentially the radius that the AI is looking at. So we can't really get a cone shape by default. You can obviously make one yourself if you want, but that would just require a lot more line traces and just a bit more fiddling about to get the perfect shape for you. But I think for the moment, 70, 70, 50 is good for me. And I will show you what that looks like in a second. I'm going to leave all the other settings by default, 
but just to test it I'm going to change draw debug type to for duration I'm going to get event tick connecting that into the box trace by channel there again you don't need to do this this is just for me to show you so I'm going to compile and I'm going to leave the AI in there so it's already in so drag and drop it in if I go over you can see that that's what the box trace looks like so it's going to be going forwards like that however that isn't perfectly what I wanted as it's just a box around the AI it should be going forwards and uh, that's because I actually forgot one thing so that was silly me I forgot one very important thing out of the get right vector I want to get a vector multiplied by a float the reason I forgot that is because I just did it the steps backwards a bit I got the vector plus vector first so get the multiply connecting that into the plus vector and then whatever we times this float by is how big this box trace is going to be so I want it to go forward 700 units so that's how far forward the AI can see but you can change this to whatever you want so 500, 1000, 2000 anything like that now if I hit play again you can see that this looks a lot better it's actually going in a forward facing line like so so that's why it's always great to test your code because you can see when you easily forget simple stuff like that so I rotate it here you can see how far forward this is actually going so that's 700 units there again get this to be whatever you like so this box here is essentially where the AI is going to be able to see so again get that to look however you want and now that I've shown you I'm going to delete the event tick and change for duration to be none like so after this we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch connecting the execution into there and the condition into the return value because we only want to do this if we hit something and the break hit we're going to break hit result open it up like so out of this we're going to come up with the hit actor of the break hit result and cast to our character which for me is the third person character that's going to go into the true of the branch as we want to see if we're hitting our character which will work for that flashlight cone that we made earlier as well and we only want to come out the true because we only want to check to see if we have actually hit something. Out of the false of this branch, we're going to call the custom event we've just made, which I named look for light. So call function look for light there. And that will also come at the cast failed of the third person character as well. And so this is because if we don't hit something, we want to just check again. And if we do hit something, but it isn't the character, we're going to keep checking again as well. Out of the execution for the cast, we're going to get an AI move to, like so with the pawn being get a reference to self and the destination we can just get the location of our flashlight and this is because here this is if the AI has actually seen a player's flashlight we want to go to them so the destination we can just actually come out hit component of the break hit result get world location because obviously the component is going to be the player's flashlight that can go to the destination there so it's going to go to the center of the flashlight location wherever it's landing I think that's good and on success, we'll also go into that look for light there as well. So it then continues afterwards as well. You can put that straight out of the execution there, but I wanted to restart after it's finished moving. And this here is just my random roam code. Don't worry about that. But this should be the code done. So let me give you a quick run through again. What we're gonna do is essentially just create a box trace to search for the flashlight. If it hits the flashlight, it's gonna to go to where the flashlight location was. If it doesn't hit it, it's gonna keep searching. And to look for the flashlight, we've got an actual cone static mesh there as well. So it's got with a good collision for it as well. It's not just a light source, but that's not visible to us. So we don't know it's there. One final step to actually start this code is we want to get event begin play. So I'm just going to right click and get event begin play. And out of this, I'm going to simply get look for light call function there. So that's going to start the code and it will loop it for the whole game how we want. So let's compile, save, and we can hit play to test this out. So I go to V, it's going to first person, you can see we can walk in front of it, but it is actually going to see us as well because that will also chase us. But again, obviously you'd want that anyway. So actually what I'm going to do is just rotate it like so. So it's facing that way. Now if I walk up to it, because that just chased us, which obviously you do want as well, but that's not what I want to show you. If we hit F to turn our flashlight on, it's going to go to the location of that flashlight like so. So this works perfectly, it's going to chase the flashlight and keep going towards it like that. So this works perfectly. Again, it's very easy to implement chasing, patrolling, random roam, all of the good stuff that you might want for your AI as well. But essentially, if it sees the player's flashlight, it's gonna to go towards it. So if I stand behind it, shine a flashlight, it's gonna to go to where the flashlight went. And obviously, if you think that the AI looks pretty dumb there because it's going to where the flashlight is and where it's coming from, what you can simply do is for the destination, you can just add third person character, get actor location or actually you can just go straight into the target actor there 
and then it will go to the player character instead, which obviously makes AI a lot smarter. So if you put a flashlight there, oh, sorry it saw me anyway, so that's the chase. If we put a flashlight on the wall, it's going to go to the player character anyway, because it realizes that's where the flashlight's coming from, so it's going to go there. But for the moment, I just want it to be where the flashlight goes. So I think that'll be it for this video, we've done everything you want to do. We set up this great flashlight system in which when we shine the flashlight on a wall or anything like that, the AI will see it and then go towards it like so, which is another good distraction, or it's just another part of a stealth game, so the player has to actually be careful with where they're shining their flashlight. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.